Okay, so we're about five minutes until Patty starts her presentation on data submission guidelines for uh, uh, AEBG Tops Pro Enterprise. Uh, just want to check for all the folks who are now in the webinar who were not about five minutes five minutes ago when I went through this. If you're able to hear me, okay, uh, please let me know in the chat section uh, at the bottom of center of your screen if you're able to hear me. All right. Looks like lots of folks typing, so yes. Looks like we're still getting yeses. Good to know. Okay, we'll get started with Patty in just a few minutes here. I just wanted to run through some of the uh, logistics of the webinar session here. Um, for those of you who just joined us, please press the pause button to stop the music at any time. You'll see the music uh, box, the pod there, in the top center of your screen. Please post any questions in the chat pod. If you have any questions at any time during this webinar. For audio dial-in, I have included it in the chat section. Um, for those who need to use their phone to dial in, you'll see the telephone number, participant passcode, cut and paste into the chat pod. And just keep in mind, an online evaluation will be sent to each of you 24 hours after the end of this webinar. So please be on the lookout for that in your inbox tomorrow. And in just a couple of minutes here, we'll get started with Patty. Thank you very much. All right, it's noon on the dot. Hello, everybody. This is Daryl Parsons again from the AEBG TAP office, presenting Patty Long today for the AEBG Data Submission Guidelines for end of year. And I would like to now introduce uh, Patty Long. I'm going to move everybody over to her presentation page. And Patty, the floor is yours. Yep. Thank you so much. So. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Patty Long. I'm a program specialist for CASAS. And first of all, I want to thank everybody on the TAP team that's just, I feel like I'm riding in a limo here. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. If you've got questions, just put them in the, the uh, uh, chat screen and we'll get to them. Let me see. All right, so it's all about preparing your, your TOPS Pro data. So remember that you need to have an entry record, all of that demographic information for the students, uh, a pre and a post test uh, that most we're trying to do this year, doesn't have to be CASAS, uh, and then an update record, all of those outcome, uh, uh, all of that outcome information that we want to uh, see on those students that isn't necessarily reflected in uh, uh, testing. So remember that you have to, if you're using a third-party attendance system, you need to export the information from your third-party attendance system into TOPS Pro. Uh, we can help a little bit with some of these uh, big, bigger companies, ASAP Schoolhouse, Aim and Banner. Um, if you have another attendance system, you'll need to call us at tech support and call your attendance system too because they should have the information of how to import your, your data into TOPS Enterprise. Okay, I was waiting for some questions. I don't see any questions. Remember, you want to export your files into a CSV format. So all you have to do is go to Tools, in TOPS Enterprise. Go down to third party import wizard and just follow the directions. And it's uh, uh, just a bunch of uh, little radio dials that you need to click to get your data in once you've exported it to, let's say, a file on your desktop, uh, which is the trick for me because then I usually can't find anything after I've downloaded it. But that's a, an issue with me. Okay, and if you're not using an attendance system, you can add uh, attendance hours directly into TOPS Enterprise. Just go into the student record, and that there, there is a um, um, Add Entry Update Record button there. Just click on that, and then scroll down to Class Activity. You'll want to make sure to put in the record date when you're importing it, or when you're adding it. And you can either add, um, I would suggest, accumulated hours at this point. And that's for all of last fiscal year, July 1st to June 30th. Is everybody okay? This is going to be a fast training if everybody's okay. All right. You can take daily attendance in TOPS Enterprise if you don't have another attendance system that you prefer um, or that you use. You can make this accessible to your teachers so that they can take attendance for their classes. Uh, uh, we do do trainings on it. We have uh, lots of help documentation on our website on how to do this. Um, and again, if you need help, just call tech support. But uh, each box automatically fills with the full amount of uh, time for each student in each class. So then you just um, deselect the students who were absent that day. And since it's all web-based, your teachers can access it from anywhere. Oh, and I see that you're, you've got uh, notices on you found some bugs. Are you using ASAP 3? That seems to be an issue. Um, I know ASAP is working on it, and uh, hopefully we'll get it, they'll get it all squared away. ASAP 2 was not a problem. ASAP 3 is a bit of an issue. Uh, we do have some people that you could talk to, too, that... Uh-oh. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting distracted. So, uh, I do have some people that you can talk to that actually work in uh, several programs that have hands-on experience with ASAP 3, if that's what you're having the problem. Okay. Your entry record information that you need to have. 
and I see that we're having, I hear that we're having um, sound problems. Uh, Janie, you're asking about pre-post tests for work readiness. We, we do, but the tests that you need to do, use are the ones that are NRS approved. And for that, we've got reading, math, and uh, listening for ESL. Math for ABE. Okay, so I think we got it taken care of. Thank you, guys. And uh, so that's that on the, the testing. Uh, so remember, you need to have the student's name and address, their demographic information, labor force status, any barriers to employment. Um, and it's important to gather those so that we can report them uh, to the state. And then uh, date of entry into class and date of entry into the program. So remember, you just can't just assign the students a class. You have to assign them a, a class and a program. And any special programs, if, you've, if you're using any of those. Looking for questions. OK, Janie, good. Why are you only collecting class program information on ESL? What about CTE? Um, because I uh, no, you can go ahead and, and collect the information on CTE. It's I realized that I left it out. Any special programs? Any special programs? OK. Any special programs? Daryl. So Amy, does that answer your question? Patty, hi, this is Daryl. Yes. Uh, yes. I was a little distracted by that um, background noise a second ago, so sorry, but I meant to ask you if you were able to get to Francisca Bravo's question, uh, who asks, do we need to have a pretest for a diploma class? The question asks, do we need to have a pretest for a diploma class? Yes, if they're an ABE ASE student, they need to have a pre and a post test. Okay, so Amy, yes, I can update the slide to make sure that it says all of the um, the AEBG uh, programs. Okay, and the update record, uh, remember that you can do these throughout the year to uh, gather all of that information, all of those successes that your students are having. So. Uh, uh, and they just stack on one another. You want to make sure to have the instructional program designated on it. Any services that they've received. So this brings in that. I'm so glad I brought mine. So that brings in uh, uh, box eight services received. And even if the student didn't attend classes, but you provided services for them, you want to document that. And then again, any and all of those learner results that they may have had. Now we do have a data dictionary for AEBG posted on our website. Uh, so it, and it provides clarification and a definition for absolutely everything on this entry update record. And so it will help clarify some of those uh, items that are a bit confusing. We blame it on the NRS. All right, oh, tons of questions. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, do students need to be assigned to a program and a class? Yes. Uh, uh, Janice, what kinds of tests are available for CTE? Uh, again, it's uh, that I believe the testing is only required for um, ABE, ASE, and ESL, not CTE. Uh, can we use, ooh, ooh, they're going by too fast. Can we use a GED practice test for entry and exit? No, this, it's not reportable. Um, Lorena, how to report services not received if not enrolled in a class? Oh, services, <laughs> thanks, because that did confuse me. So uh, report services received. Um, you can open up a uh, record in TOPS Enterprise and then uh, mark the supportive training or transition or any career or rehab services that you gave them. And oh, yay, Jay's come in. Uh, so anyway, now I'm reading his thing and getting distracted. OK. So did we get everybody services received, Lorena? So that's um, 
I would uh, no, I don't believe you have to have them assigned to a class in a program since they didn't go in uh, and it will pick it up on some other reports. Oh good, and Jay says that too. Okay, manual entry, got it. Uh, couldn't we add them directly into TE? Yes, manual entry, Connie, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it's understood that some students may be receiving orientation without ever enrolling into a class. All right, good. So, uh, let's talk about um, the new AEBG tables. Just got an update on TE today, so it's likely that you haven't seen it yet. If you want to run your summary, remember you don't have to um, submit this. This is just for your information. This is not a deliverable, but a lot of people have been asking about it. Um, so you go to Reports, California Reports, and go to the AEBG Tables. And once you open up that, you want to go down to Report Selection, and you'll have several choices here. Uh, you'll want to check the AEBG 2017 Summary, and then click Generate. Any questions about that? Again, they're not a deliverable. It's just for your information, and I realize that this is the old table. So let's go over to TE and look at the new one. Hang on just a second. OK, and hopefully you can see my screen. So we're going to go over to Reports, Oop. down to State Reports in California, AEBG Tables, and we're going to go down to Report Selection, Deselect All, and I'm doing that because it takes time to run all of those reports, but we want to look at this AEBG Summary, and let's go back to the General Settings to make sure that we're choosing for last fiscal year so we can actually get some data up, and Generate. And here is the new report. So, Jay, did you want to go over this with everybody? I can't hear him, so. So, everybody, just give I, us a sec to see if we can get Jay in here. Yeah, oh. Patty, I see that his phone is is not muted, so there shouldn't be a problem with him talking right now. Jay, are you able to hear us? Let's see what we can do for this, Patty. Uh, we'll get this fixed up for you so Jay okay. can chime in here. OK. So I mean, I can start. You can see the seven program areas including the no designated program for those services received. And then um, here we've got it broken down to students who are in two or more programs and then an unduplicated count of those students. So uh, in this uh, first couple of columns, we've got the measurable skills gains and we've got the total number of enrollees, those who achieved a gain, Are you able to share And then we've got our ABG. Now? I'm sorry, Patty. I was just going to check in with you. There okay. he is. That's okay. There he is. Okay. Yay. Sorry. I must have hit a wrong passcode or something. I used the right number, but the passcode must have been incorrect. Uh, so anyway, I'm on. So did you want me to just kind of yeah. guide through this report? That's sorry, okay. I'm coming in haphazardly like this. Uh, so I guess I'll start here kind of at the top. I know Patty showed how to generate. I could kind of see those steps on the screen. Uh, I think what she was just trying to convey is you have that setup window to set up the reports, and she was taking that extra step probably because somebody like me would say, 
all of the reports theoretically are useful, but in my mind, this A, B, G summary that's on the screen, you might say, is substantially more useful than any of the other ones on there. I kind of feel like the tables one through four will probably be more useful once it's all said and done for state reporting. But for some of the troubleshooting that you're doing now while you're amidst the data submission process, got to say the ABG summary is probably I think a so, lot yeah. more valuable than any of those other ABG reports. Okay, hopefully that at least makes sense. So Patty was showing you how to do that. Uh, do you have that report as big as you can get on the screen, Patty? Just wondering. Okay, it just seems like it's kind of just a small little part of the screen, but I'll just go ahead and live with it. But anyway, I've got that. You've got that report on the screen. The obvious thing that stands out, as you can see, there are three sections of the report that is representing three different levels of outcomes. And I use levels just because the analogy I've used in some other presentations on this is I kind of like to call it high bar, medium bar, low bar, going from left to right. So we'll Start with the highest bar on the left-hand side. That's the part that includes literacy gains. So I say it's a high bar for that outcome under columns B and C because it requires the most. That is, the, the uh, literacy gains it includes all of those NRS federal requirements like 12 hours of instruction and demographics and all those things required for we owe it to in federal reporting. And in addition, it requires pre and post testing with the obvious reason being this is for literacy gains. So the outcome it's reporting are those gains that student makes from pre-test to post-test. So obviously that's the outcome that requires pre- and post-testing, so that's why I say high bar is it includes the federal requirements. In addition, it requires pre- and post-testing. So it will give you the number of enrollees that meet all those requirements in column B, and then of those that show up in column B, giving you the number who achieved the gain in column C. Okay, so moving on to that middle section called self-reported student, out, student outcomes, you can see the number of enrollees in column E, and you can see those other columns, you know, uh, through column I, there's the six columns in the middle. I would call that the quote-unquote medium-level bar. I would say that because there's still kind of a high bar for this, but it's not as high of a bar as what you see in column B. That is for the AB 104 measurable skills gains that relates to NRS and WIOS, so it is looking for things like, uh, you know, demographics and hours of instruction. However, it does not require any testing whatsoever. So that's, you know, obviously a big difference. So those, that middle section requires hours and demographics, but not anything at all related to pre- and post-testing. Then over on the right-hand side, those are the short-term services. You can see we have four different categories of the services. The number who qualify is in column J, the four different services in columns K through M. For this section, that's the low bar. That basically only no, requires a student ID. So for the services, the demographics are not required. The hours of instruction are not required. <laughs> Bottom line is, as long as you have a student ID in there, it will basically make that student oh, eligible for services 
literally anything beyond ID. Technically, it's not required. Obviously, the more demographics and the more hours you can provide for these students, the better. But if you don't have the hours or you don't have the demographics for the student, the student will nonetheless be able to earn these services outcomes. So again, high bar to the left, medium bar in the middle, lower bar to the right, representing those uh, three different levels of requirements for the different kinds of outcomes. Okay, uh, not required, and I'm not sure what you mean by business state. Can people hear me? Hopefully I'm seeing some people saying you can't hear me. Hopefully everybody can. Okay, it's just one person, but okay. All right, it's just one person can't hear, not everybody. Sorry about that. Okay, loud and clear. I guess that's putting it mildly. Thank you. Lots of uh, lots of feedback there. Thank you, everybody. So that was great. Everybody is about as helpful as helpful can be on that one. Great. Okay, so we've got the three different levels, again, pre post to the left, AB 104 outcomes slash measurable skill gains in the middle, short-term services to the right. So again, we've got those highlighted columns, B, E, and J, with the number of enrollees. So that's tabulating the people that qualify under each area. Okay, so hopefully this is clear. Most of you said yes. Uh, okay, are they exactly the same as we are? Uh, no, they're not exactly the same. I'll say that the measurable skill gains for ABG are, of course, very similar to WIOA, uh, and they're, a, they're, they're adapted from WIOA, but they're not exactly the same. I'd say the oversimplified answer is we basically have those six AB 104 outcomes for ABG, that is literacy gains, uh, HSE, HS diploma, post-secondary employment, wage increase in wages, and transition. Those are the six outcomes that the legislature basically spelled out as the required outcomes for ABG. Uh, the oversimplified answer is I would say five out of the six do exactly match WIOA, but the transition outcome really has nothing to do with WIOA. That's a California-specific outcome that the legislature added as the sixth outcome. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, okay, transitions of the different kinds of services. The short, the short answer is there's still a lot of state-level clarity necessary for all the different areas of services. What I would say is, is I get kind of confused myself on exactly which one are transition services versus which ones are training services and so on. The short answer is right now you're kind of on your honor to mark what you want to mark. So if you confuse training services with transition services, the long story short is that's really not a problem. If you, the agency, say it's a training service, oh, well, quite muted. frankly, then Got by it. definition it's a training service because you said so. For 1718, there'll be a little more clarity on this. You'll probably need to follow the state guidance a little bit better, but you basically have the power to determine this. What I've been telling people for the last few months is if you have confusion and you'd prefer to have guidance, my suggestion has been in TE, go to records, students, and program years. Maybe if somebody can type that, that would be helpful. Records, students, and program years. That is the lister and the specific record inside TE that you can go to that has those different services. What I'll say is in that record student in program years record, it basically has three different sections in that record. 
Uh, it has a section for training services, a section for transition services, and a tra section for supportive services. And in each one of in each of those three sections, it basically includes a roughly eight or ten item laundry list for each of those three sections. You know, giving you you know what TE has for the different kinds of services. So if you're a so, little confused as so to Jay, can which you hear areas me? fit. Under each of those categories, okay, so, um, a couple of answers, yes, you can, you can mark uh, uh, and at least get whatever a applies, you can mark more than one, and no, you don't necessarily have to create a whole new record. Services. So um, yeah, you're in the right you just place. So just open up this new record, you just add in the information you need. You don't have to complete everything new button in the on the screen. Left. You can yeah. just put in um, new button in the sorry, upper left. the right screen. You can just select the student and just add there's services training received services to it. received. You don't need to pull up everything there's else. transition services received and supportive services received. You know, some of those may not really make sense to you. So I'll, I'll, it's assumed that for pretty much all of these examples will probably apply to some of you, but not necessarily all of you. But what I would just say is you can see by the list of examples. Okay, so Amy, if you would generalize, you wanted to see how we of what's considered quote unquote training versus what's considered quote unquote transition versus what's considered quote unquote supportive. And I'll just right, so reiterate for the umpteenth time here records, that if you get it confused, in program it's years. not exactly fitting the right category. The consequences you will bear is basically yeah. nothing. And then it's I want to change the program here. If you get a little bit confused for this Oop, year, the that state one. realizes that one. if it's going to get an overall item count for this. And there's all of our students. never going to be anything that absolute because there was never really okay. anything so let's from get the back state to Jay's level report. that spelled that out, you know, uh, with any degree so of certitude. AEBG Does tables that at right least at the make top. sense? I'm hoping some people sure in chat can either tell me, last year. yes, this is making sense, or no, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I'll wait for a minute. And yeah. And try to make it a little bit bigger. That's right. So if you're doing, a, a couple people had uh, some chat questions over the last 10, 15 minutes or so ago about whether you can just manually enter this in TE. The short answer is yes. This also kind of gives you the directions inside the software of where you mark this if you just want to go ahead and mark it directly in TE. Okay. So. So I just typed in. Uh, I just typed in that uh, menu uh, option for where you go in TE to do that. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so you're showing it great. So if you don't mind that, last show and tell, and then if you don't mind, maybe we can get back to the report. Okay, so here's the report itself. So I think we've covered these three columns. Uh, it sounds like from your feedback you understand that and you understand the three different sections of the report. So at the expense of uncovering something that a lot of people 
probably didn't realize anyway. You know, we had this report in TE since late May. We just did a new release of TE early this morning that updated this report. In the version that existed before this morning, there was a du there was a duplicate unduplicated issue in the report that we fixed. What I mean by that is the version before this morning made an effort to it's provide an unduplicated count for these numbers. What that means is, is if you have students that are enrolled in more than one program, for example, you've got a student that's enrolled in ABE and that same student is also enrolled in CTE, this report made an effort to roll up that student and plug that student into only one program so that each student is only counted once on this report. Long story short is, is we wanted to go ahead and make this a duplicated report so that students will be required, will be reported two or more times if they're in more than one program. So using my example, the way it looked before is if a student is an ABE and CTE, the way it was before this morning is that we would roll that student up into just one program and count that student one time. Now the way we fixed it is if a student is in more than one program, the report now intentionally counts that student twice. In my example, that means it counts the student once under ABE and then it also counts that student once under career tech ed because in my example, the student is enrolled in both ABE and career tech ed. You know, the way we had it was the way we're required to do it for federal reporting. So there was some assumption that we needed to match federal reporting. Long story short is for ABG, we do not need to match federal reporting. There's a lot of you that really want to make sure that all the programs get there, you know, that get fully reported so you know how much, what's exactly going on in CTE, what's exactly going on in apprenticeship and so on. So that's why we fixed it. So I'm going to bet, I'm going to stop for a minute and just make sure that everybody knows what on earth I'm talking about here. I'm obviously not sure whether I'm making sense or not. So if a few of you don't mind, if the answer is no, you're not making any sense at all, that's fine, but I'm feeling the need to have you elbow me in the ribs and tell me I'm not. Okay, I can see people are typing, I can't tell. That's correct. So, so you might have students, some agencies are rife with this, some agencies not so much, but it's totally normal for students to be in more than one program. So a student can certainly be enrolled in ABE and Career Tech Ed in the same year. You know, that's just one example. They could be in ASE and ESL or any combination. It's totally normal for some students to potentially be enrolled in three or four different programs at once within a year. You know, that's not unusual at all. The way we had it before didn't necessarily mean you couldn't do that. It just meant the way the report, the report logic before this morning, what made took an extra step to roll it up into one program with the idea that each student gets counted only one time. Now the way we have it now, each student potentially gets counted as many times as the number of programs in which that student is enrolled. Okay. So now it's just giving you multiple numbers. So again, the issue is really more in the outcome side. So let's use my same example. There's a student enrolled in ABE and they're also enrolled in Career Tech Ed where it really affects agencies is on the outcome side. So let's just say that student got a job sometime in the year. What most agencies would say is, hey, that's great that it gets counted that one time, but what we really want to be able to see is we want to see that as a positive outcome for our ABE program. We also want to be able to see that as a positive outcome for our career tech ed program. If we do that 
unduplicated count, it will count one but not both. We need to make it undo or we need to make it duplicated like we have it now to make sure that both ABE and Career Tech Ed in my example both get credit for that get a job outcome in my example. Again, I'm gonna stop for a minute here and see if I'm making sense, yes or no. Obviously there's a lot of chats going on. Okay, there's a couple of yeses. Okay, all right, thank you. Thanks for humoring me on that. Again, I can't see any of you, and I'm kind of getting deep in the weeds here, so it's hard for me to just say whether I am or I'm, I'm not making any sense. It sounds like for the most part, yes. So I guess that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So again, you know, uh, well, there, you're, you don't generate a separate report, but Amy, uh, your question is a good one, so I'll use that as a segue to move on. So what we just did is you can see we added those bottom three rows. In the old version, those bottom three rows didn't exist. So yes, you can or you see can click in the orange have, bar. So that total yep. basically just aggregates the total number of outcomes. That's the duplicated number. You can see in that middle row we make an effort to show the number of students that we recorded as being in more than one program, and then we reconcile both rows with that bottom row that just shows you the total unduplicated number of students for each outcome. So you can see, for example, under enter employment, we had 39 total outcomes reported. We had four students that were in more than one program. So the total oh. number of outcomes is 39, but the total number of students who achieved that outcome is 35. You know, that's the duplicated outcome in the top row the unduplicated outcome in the bottom row. That's how we're reconciling that information. Okay, so hopefully that also makes sense. Okay, and then Patty is already moving forward to the last point I wanted to make about the reports, which is to drill down. So one thing you can do is you can do a simple left click, which will double click on this row and basically, uh, you know, provide the drill down. If you just do the simple left click, what that's going to do for you is to show you the exact students represented in that cell. And so I can't, okay, so Patty double clicked that 35 that represents the total number of students that achieved an enter employment outcome. So basically by doing the simple double clicking, that's going to show you exactly which students are representing in that cell. So what? So in the cell Patty clicked, it showed the number 35 for the number of students who achieved an enter employment outcome. Not so coincidentally, you might say at the top, you can see that generates a lister of exactly 35 students with those 35 students being the same exact students that achieved that enter employment outcome. So what uh, Patty's going to do now is uh, go ahead and get that navigator bar back. No, not there from the list. Okay, get the navigator bar back and then click back on the report and the you know on the report title on the navigator bar. So click that. <laughs> yes. Click that. Yeah. That will restore it back to the report. So if you do the simple left click, that's how we just reconcile that number. We've got 35 students represented in the cell. Left clicking shows us which 35 students those are. Jay and, then we can also and Patty, uh, there was a question that Diana right wanted to bring to our attention that we missed from earlier. Maria was asking uh, what the difference in terms is so uh, for right post-exit leading to post-secondary and leading to post-secondary credential or enrollment. Would you be able to define you know, the differences a, of those two? A, a set of options four different listers, as well as three different reports that we can right-click and drill down to. Not off to. the top of my head. So find do student um, records but if it you is, want, that's fine. Uh, you can do, do, don't do, do A, B, or do student records is fine. That's what you were going to do first. But you can right-click and go to an alternative lister. 
and what this Maria, president looks like she's will give you and, and, uh, uh, while, detailed while information. Just one other question that came up earlier that I think is going to be very useful for everybody in general. Uh, what are the troubleshooting resources that folks in the field can use as they are processing these reports? And add more information if you want. You also have three different reports. If you're a little unsure about this for now, you might just want to left click and just verify the numbers for now. But you, all, but I'll just point out you also have the options option with seven different right click options, four different listers, three different reports where you can right click and drill down and get yet even more information to find out more about what's going on with the students who might be positively achieving outcomes and or students who may be not achieving the outcomes because of missing information or other issues, or if you feel like you need to do more fact findings and just look at who the list of those students are, you've got lots of ways where you can drill down and get more information for those students represented in each cell in this report. So now you've drilled down. I don't know if I'd really use the NRS monitor much, I mean, uh, it's there. If you know a lot about NRS, I think it's useful, but I'm not sure I want to recommend it just because it's so NRS-centric. If you're not an NRS expert, you might find yourself getting annoyed with that. So I'd say that in terms of what information includes, the level, it'll give you all the details you'd ever want to know and more. But anecdotally, some are saying the level of detail on that one might be a little bit more detailed than what a lot of you want to tackle. Okay. So I'll sort of, I think I'll leave it at that. I think I've probably TMI'd this one to death, but if there's specific questions about any of this, yes, yes, you can, you can right click. So Amy, your question's a good one, but I'll just uh, clarify the question by saying you need to right click and then select that report if you want to drill down to the DIR. And, and remember that we do have examples of that in the data dictionary that's posted online. Okay, so we talked to Maria, so I'm not sure which it is. I think you said Maria, but I'll let Maria type it in, I guess. Are you referring to update records fields 12 and 14? I think that's what you're referring to, but I'm not sure. Okay, so she's saying. Okay, uh, got it. Let's go ahead and stick with Maria's question first, just because it was the one that came out of the box first. So on update record field 12 and 14, the short answer is both of, for ABG, they both basically work the same way as you can mark either update record field 12 or update record field 14. Both of those will basically, uh, you know, give you outcomes in the transition column for ABG. Doesn't matter what program or any of that, either way it will show up as a transition outcome. For more of a technical explanation, this, I'd say the technical distinction doesn't really apply to ABG, but there is a technical distinction on the WIOA side where it's basically looking at, you know, students who basically, you know, uh, followed up, that is, they exited and then followed up. One of the fields basically is for students who followed up and went to college. The other is for students who followed up and basically uh, enrolled in like a training program. They all kind of relate to post-secondary, but a couple of those bubbles relate to education, which would suggest that they exited and then went to college. The other one uses the uh, term training, which suggested they exited and then enrolled in like a career tech ed program or a Yellow One program. That is, they didn't go back to college, but they did go back into some sort of workforce training. 
So if you go deep in the Wiyoa weeds, Wiyoa makes a distinction as to whether they exited and then went to college or exited and then went to workforce training. For ABG, we really haven't gotten to that level of detail yet. So anything you mark in update field 12 or update field 14, quite frankly, all goes to the same place in this report. Hopefully that helps Maria. Okay. Okay, so I'll use, okay, I see Maria's feedback. Hopefully, I guess that's your story and you're sticking to it, but I'm going to go ahead and roll with your positive response. Thank you. So I'll use Patty's comment as a segue to Daryl's other question, which is, uh, the, you know, Patty just brought up one thing. We do have a data dictionary. It's on the California Accountability page on the CASAS website. It's something we brought up a lot during those 12 regional trainings during the spring. So we have the data dictionary there. Uh, you know, it basically includes all of the fields on the entry update record with the definition for each. What I'll say is, is around uh, early That was April. terrific, Jay. Yes, thank so you very much. And, and you, uh, as that's Jay that's mentioned, that's Diana is also while, putting these but resources I'll say that in the early chat box April down below for you kind of to After take a about at. half of those regional trainings were in the rearview mirror. So if you attended one of the later trainings, we put we basically gave this as an okay. So handout, uh, we're ready to go back. We'll come back to TE, trainings. and I can get it. Um, but in show you how to run some There's a handout that we added to the data dictionary that basically lists each of those eight, each of those six AB 104 categories and gives a laundry list for the outcomes that relate to each of those AB 104 categories. So we put that out as a handout of the training, and we also added it as a couple page, extra pages worth of information in the data dictionary. We released the data dictionary in early 2017, but the big piece that was missing at that point was it didn't really specify what you should be reporting for AB 104, so we added that like around late March, early yeah, April. So if you, didn't, if you didn't get that, or maybe you got it, but you were an eager beaver that got it early in this process, you might want to go back and get it because there were some big changes we oh, added. Thank you. Again, they Sorry, guys. Hang on just a sec. April or thereabouts. Technical issues. So that's one resource is you can download that ABG Data Dictionary. Another obvious resource is there's two email addresses. Uh, it looks like Diana's already providing that, but you can email AEBG at casas.org. I would say that's an email you can use if you're having trouble uh, you know, with just the policy issues or clarity on what fields relate to specific ABG outcomes, then that ABG at casas.org is a good way to go. If you feel like you've got a good handle on that, but your issue is just with finding something in a TE lister or TE report or something like that, then you could contact tech support at casas.org. I would say to some extent, those email addresses are somewhat interchangeable, but the short answer is for policy issues, use the ABG email address. For TE mechanical issues, use the tech support email address. And then I'd say if it's more related to fiscal issues, uh, you, then you'd want to use that ABG office uh, you know, email, which would be ABG at cccco.edu. So there's at least three different emails I'm trying you can to use, you. you know, one for mechanical issues, one for, you know, data collection policy issues, and the other more for state-level fiscal and other policy issues. Okay, so hopefully, Daryl, that gets at the uh, general question you brought up there a few minutes ago. I guess I'll let people follow up with something more specific if we didn't really get it all.
The one last, sorry, one last thing on technical support, just because, uh, um, you know, I was kind of remiss, and I see Diane and Penny are putting lots of good info here, is, of course, there's that tap, you know, at ABG, you know, dot, dot org that's also, there's that tap uh, tech support, you know, email address that you can also use that Diana typed in. So that's another one you can use where the TAP program is also providing lots of tech support. So if you feel like you've had it up to here with CASAS and you've had it up to here so with Jay, the So, Jay, if they ABC don't have office, all the fields available in their third-party system, some help as well. what do you suggest? Okay, so I can see some of the questions about uploading. I think the short answer is yes. There's a longer answer where it's not quite as simple as the way you guys are describing it, but some of that is up in the air, so sorry, I'm not going to detail that. But the short answer is yes, but I've got to say the timeline is uncertain, so I don't think uh, – I don't know what you're talking about at all, Kristen, but there are some other ones from a couple others of you where the short answer is yes. There's a longer answer where it's not quite as simple as what you're suggesting, but the short answer is yes, there will be probably a second okay, server, and for Janice, I'm not quite sure what that you, timeline uh, is going to be. Send us an so email the short with term is I don't want to throw that out there as really being anything um, that's going to do much for anybody we'll right be able to now. Handle it under tech in the support. longer term for next year, there should be something tell us like what that program that's you're using helpful, and all of but that. For the, the right year right now, it probably won't be because that's a longer term solution, not something that's just going to come out right away. Okay, good. All right, did we kind of hit all of those questions? I think so. I'm not sure what you mean about typing okay, in each so, one manually after you're done. Okay, I'm not sure about these extra questions, but I, that's the general answer on the on the uploading issue. Right. Yes, uh, there will be more, but I don't yeah, have a timeline to give anybody. Yeah, we still got more to we're share, and we, we are, as I said, so we're still not done. We'll that's why you would do the upload is no, you wouldn't need to manually enter. It's more of like an either or, where you would manually upload to avoid doing manual entry. But I do believe there's some people that are saying that, uh, you know, some okay, cases great. it might great, be because you're having trouble Thanks, with Jay. the third-party import. In other cases, Stay maybe on, that's working fine. Okay. You've got a smaller number of students. <laughs> okay. So it may or may so, not um, be worth uh, a uh, Let's talk about generating that uh, data yeah, we're not doing report. That this is the item that you need to send us. Go ahead and, manually and again, you go to reports, so I think what you're asking, state reports, I think reports, the answer to your question is California, no. But, you know, and uh, just under the one that we did is the AEBG okay, data integrity. That, not all the fields in the third party so kind of depend. Make sure again party, that you select the program here in the setup some window have all those fields available. for Maybe some um, of the, other ones the 16, 17 year. Again, addressing somebody else's question earlier. Uh, yes, you just you click on all the programs that apply to you. Your programs may be different. Well, I think it kind of depends on which field it and is. And then all you have Some to do is fields, click generate. Yeah, you need to go back and mark them. Some of the fields may not be that critical, so no, you okay. don't. And it also kind of depends. Choo -choo -choo. A lot of this has been with uh, um, agencies so that are just bringing and, up uh, the larger run number that of students really quick, with the which short -term means I get to services. My, uh, if you record the services, um, but maybe you don't get you know, some of the again. demographics or some of the things so like goals tight. or labor force status, Probably not a big showstopper, probably not something you need to go back and do, All but right. maybe if it's for students that are earning, so, you know, the higher level outcomes or getting literacy gains, then Friday. maybe you do, so we're gonna go to or reports. maybe if what's missing is something else, but State it's all reports. kind of a scenario driven. It California. kind of depends on what it is you're uploading and the AEG into TE, data and, and it kind report. of depends on what might have been dropped when you were Again, uploading we're gonna it change that, that, that you might program need to go here. back and do. Lots of possible answers. I'm going to make uh, sure I've that. got all the stuff that I want marked for my agency. I don't have to change anything else. And then I'm just going to click Generate.
Yay! Now Friday we're going to go over a lot of this. So if you want to come Friday, that's that'll be great. The um, um, the next thing that you want to do is click export and save it as a PDF. And let's do it on the I'll desktop kind of so I can find it. Darryl, I know that Daryl's not the only one. There's a and lot of people see. helping us here. But Daryl and others, I guess, that it was successfully uh, completed, just, and then uh, send us an email Jeff and attach here. that PDF. Are there maybe some other questions because they have been coming pretty quickly? Are there Is maybe some clear? other areas that we, uh, you know, where we might have, uh, you know, overlooked or missed something? Uh, mine is all running. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's see. Uh, to do, can you post the link for the data dictionary? Yes, they already uh, uh, posted the link. And okay, Francisco, you. yeah, that's it. That's the only report due. Okay, Remember I'll that the ABG here. table report talking, is just for your information. It's not anything that you send in to us. Now keep in mind that's the only Tops Enterprise report that's due. Not sure what else you guys might may have do is the best person to contact with a question oh i lost the question uh, uh, uh. um you know what um who said that amy asked why is there no oh, it's, well, jay's gonna have to address the rocp thing um where do we send the report to aebg let me go back to my uh other let's go back to the PowerPoint and everything is listed there uh, yay I gotta tell you guys that's a skill to be able to change those screens here So you want to send it to aebg at casas.org. You will receive a receipt within a couple of days. And, um, uh, but we'll, we'll have all of the data then. So um, remember, your data is already in TOPS Pro. You're fixing or adding any missing data. Um, and then once you've got everything all fixed, run that report save it as a PDF and attach it to an email, All right? There's no AEBG tables to be sent in. There's no certification letter to be sent in. Okay, and Christina, that's uh, gonna be something that we address later, unless Jay wants to address it now. Um, uh, why is, there's a um, students that are 16 to 18 age group, and that would be because if they're 16 years old and and, uh, and emancipated, This is Daryl, Patty. Sorry to right. interrupt. The, I just uh, wanted to make clear uh, what Diana said below because she doesn't have the uh, capacity yeah. to, to uh, talk that AEBG funds 18-year-old students oh, and yeah. older, just to make that clear to the field. OK, so but the, this item is going to help you to be able to um, clear out and, and uh, find those students that are that are marked 16 and get them out of your data. So it's not bad to be able to see it. Okay, what about ROCP? Um, Jay, can you answer Amy's question? Which, which one is that now? 
Right. They theoretically could be. I mean, some of that is because uh, it's based on federal reporting where the minimum age is actually 16, not 18. But, yeah, for ABG, that's probably less relevant. But, yeah, theoretically it's possible that you could have an emancipated youth student there, and so it's technically possible that that could happen. Okay, so we're looking really good. Um, remember that all of your data is housed on those CASA servers. Um, your consortium data manager can access your data at any time, but uh, once you turn in your DIR, uh, we'll combine it into that state report. And in fact, I think that happened with the AEBG reports, right, Jay? So that everybody can see it, the consortium report. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the screen. Um, that once you send your DIR to us, that tells us that your data is ready to be reviewed. We're going to combine all the data into a state report and submit it to CDE in the Chancellor's Office. All right. Um, uh, okay, so you're, so I think you're asking because you're okay, so it in yes, the you software, don't delete so students, you're wondering what it students. is. I think, okay, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, the regional occupation program, so it's nothing to do with ABG. I mean, you could potentially have CTE students that are enrolled in an ROCP, but you wouldn't yeah, have deleting is always bad. program ROCP. So if you don't know what that means and don't have that here. in okay. the region, so, then you wouldn't. Sorry, I was just going to say we're at 101. I'm sure people are not There's going to be leaving ABG this webinar because you folks are giving them great information, but just no, wanted to give I, you a time I, update that it is 101 right now. And this is our last slide. Again, AEBG and then tech support. All right. Uh, so I. Uh, call to you. Yeah, Amy, that's the table, the table that we've been looking at. So. Um, and I just wanted to say I'll that uh, there are still a couple of last second questions that are coming in. Uh, uh, if you, uh, you folks, Jay and Patty, want to try to address those with the last minute or so that we're going to take here and then uh, we can say our final words to the folks out in the field. Yeah, yeah, I said, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Amy, I added in the, the new AEBG report. I see that I did it at the end instead of in the middle. I'll replace the report. It yeah, will be I right when Christina's it gets sent to you. Question, sorry, I see a, the, the Christina's question. I would say, no, don't delete the students. If you've got students under age 18 in there, yeah, just this leave is the them one that there. we've been looking at on uh, top. That will be sorted the one out. That Jay walked us through. But yeah, I definitely and, wouldn't um, go back and delete uh, that. The one that's available in TE now. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, it's going to be posted. Um, Yes, we've got another training on uh, a Friday, and it's going to be uh, Are You on Target with your DIR? What, are, um, what have been state results for a lot of these items, and how far, uh, how close you are to the what we usually see in, these, in this data? So what you should be aiming for, and that'll be Friday at 12. Okay, so I... Oh, oh, wait, the email are not provided in my drop-down options. Laura, you may have uh, not have the rights to get in. You have to check with your, your head person at your agency to make sure that you're allowed access into all of, all of that. A lot of agencies, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my place. A lot of agencies start their imports at the end of the day and let them run all night. It's just what happens when we've got so many people accessing at the same time. Okay, looking at more issues. Any suggestions for upload speed now? Okay, thanks, Diana. Oh, and Connie says, <laughs> who's the master of importing her data at the end of the day and then um, 
letting it run all night. She said Saturday night is usually faster. <laughs> Uh, Liz, the, the, um, typically the, the builds are, are just run at midnight, but don't worry about, I'm not too sure what you're concerned about with those builds. The, uh, um, once it gets into the, the servers, we'll be able to run the, whatever changes in those reports have happened. All right. And Liz, was that your upload to CASAS? I mean, I, from, that was from your third party attendance system into TE, correct? Yeah, that's, that's, sorry. Maybe Connie can offer you some help. Okay, while these last few comments are coming in, I just wanted to reiterate what uh, Patty was just saying. Uh, please take a look on aebg.org. You can just type in webinars in the search box if you want a shortcut to get to the webinars page for both the archive of this, which should hopefully, fingers crossed, be up by tomorrow. Uh, we get them uh, up on that page within 24 hours for all archived webinars. So you can take a back, look back through uh, all of the notes and you can listen to all the comments that Jay and Patty were able to provide. And then again, uh, this Friday we have uh, data integrity report uh, presentation. The webinar is from 12 to 1.30. You can register for that webinar on that same webinar page on aebg.org, and Patty will be facilitating that one as well. And we also have more Tops Pro Enterprise webinars coming up in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. Take a look at that webinar page on aebg.org for all upcoming events to help you folks through it. So at this point, I would like to thank Patty and Jay very much for all the great information they were able to share. We will make sure that we go through and answer any questions that weren't covered uh, as they were coming in fast and furious on the chat box. But we want to thank you folks for attending today, and we hope that you were able to get all the information you needed. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daryl. Thanks, Jay. Veronica?